my goodness, I can't believe it. I'm doing another Biani bag. It's been several years since I've done a piece of luggage. So I think, I think it's been several years and you guys really like that video. And I think the reason why is because it goes through the steps. Um, it's very difficult for most people to read and then translate. And Biani does a great job of some videos, but she doesn't do the whole thing, which drives me insane. And um, and she still doesn't. So <laughs> I kind of hoped over the years she would. She does do a bird's eye view. And we'll talk more about that later, which is helpful. Um, I've got everything cut out. I've got just about everything cut out. I still haven't cut my strapping. I don't know why, but I haven't. And I've actually cut out and labeled. So I made a copy of the, the label sheet that comes in the pattern and I have marked everything. I've sealed my edges. Some stuff I've quilted myself. This has been quilted by me. Some stuff I took to the quilter to have it quilted. So the body of the bag, um, some of the sleeves and that, I just wanted to fussy cut a few elements on the bag. This was quilted with a bat um, quilting design. Yes, they make those for people just like me and Tula. And we're going to get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is work on my bias. I said I had everything cut out. And again, I don't have the bias cut out either. But I know that that gets a little tricky for people. People freak out with bias binding. So I'm just going to grab my square here that's been cut to what she specifies. And I'm going to cut it in half on the diagonal. I don't know if this ruler is long enough. <clears throat> it's not. I'm going to just grab a ruler that is long enough because I own one. If not, you guys can make it work. I love that I have a yardstick that is Quilter Select. It is very helpful. It comes in handy all the time. So I'm just going to make sure those are going diagonal to diagonal. And it looks pretty good. And I'm going to take this first cut. Then I'm simply going to take this side and pull it up. And do this. I'm going to let it overhang just a smidge on both sides. There we go. About a quarter of an inch overhang on, on both sides. See? A little bit of an overhang and a little bit of an overhang. Then we're just going to sew down the side. All right. I have sewn it. And now I have pressed it open and now I have a parallelogram. When I'm dealing with bias binding, I actually don't press my fabrics. It feels counterintuitive because you want the stretch in the, I mean, you really, I mean, you do, you, you want the stretch. So it's weird to me when people starch the heck out of binding. Um, if I was using this, you know, in a quilt and I was working with triangles, then I would starch the heck out of it. But I'm just saying, make it make sense. Uh, okay, so the first one that I'm doing is a little bit smaller, the first strip, because it's going to be used for that carrying pad, the little carrying pad. Okay. And then I can use the full ruler for the rest of these. And I've just got one more. And I've got my 45 degree line over here that we just line up with this edge over here. And then we know we've got a nice 45 degree angle. It's just the line on the ruler. If you want. If not, I mean, you could just trust it. It is what it is. You're getting bias, which is what you want because it stretches and goes around curves much easier. Now we have four strips. We are just going to sew these strips together. Um... Let 
let them overhang just a touch, a quarter of an inch, and then just sew down this line. Okay, I've sewn them together. I have dog ears all over the place, but then you will fold it over. I like to press mine. Um, by Annie does not. She gets better, smoother results. And she definitely gets better results than I do. However, it's just weird not to, for me not to press this. It's just, I don't know. And again, she gets better results than I do. I've tried it that way, but it, it didn't work out for me. So I'm going to go on ahead and fold this over in half, snip off all these dog ears, and then set this to the side. I could not be more annoyed. I ordered these uh, triangle rings from Amazon. They said one and a half inches. The entire thing is one and a half inches. And nobody sell these, sells these um, in store that I could get to super quick. So I had to run downtown, grab these, moving on. So thank God I bought more strapping because I just messed that up. I thought that the tab, which is the carrying strap tab, which is this entire unit, would be measured with this on the end. However, I was wrong. The fabric, the belt itself is what they're what they're measuring. Do not measure it with the ring on there, which, you know, all right, I get it. So there we go. The belt, when it's folded over, needs to be the measurement that she states in the book, which is fine, but, you know, really? <laughs> so thank God I have enough. I tell ya. If you're wondering how I caught that error, it's because the next step has this marking and there was not enough fabric to mark where I was supposed to be marking and I thought, well, that can't be right. And I realized that, see, this is why I need a video showing the entire process because I, I don't know, maybe I'm too literal or something, who knows? Who knows? And because I'm always using um, such high contrast fabrics, often a black and a white fabric, I often have to mark everything two times because the, the marking pen will show up on one and will not show up on the other often for me. Okay, so then you're just going to me um, measure your little marking spot right there and do the same thing with the other one. So I'm annoyed with the strapping. I've wasted 50, <laughs> 50 inches of strapping. I still have enough to do the project, but I think I better get warm first. So we're going to move on to, what is this, section four. Um prepare the pockets and the ends. So let's do that. Let's prepare these pockets and ends. For all my bindings, I'm just going to press them in half. I can't, again, sew with um, pins and I don't know. I just don't get as smooth results as I want. So I'm going to press mine in half and then I'm going to bind it like you probably would bind your quilt. Except for I'm going to do it by machine. I'm going to sew to the back, flip to the front. Okay, I'm starting to feel a little better. I'm telling you that wasted 50 inches of <laughs> binding is, or strapping is a little annoying. Okay, getting over it, moving on. You guys have moved on from it. I will too. I am just giving my binding some encouragement. And then I'm going to go over and stitch it down. This is a tight binding, so I'm going to use my stitch in the ditch foot. It's my favorite way to get a nice line of stitching. Um, usually I put a couple of drops of glue in here just to tack it down, and I might do that. We'll see in just a moment how I feel. But right now I'm just showing you that I sewed it to the back and flipped it to the front, and that's how I'll be doing all of my bindings. 
I'm working on the trolley sleeve and the front pocket, which is this guy right here, and then the back pocket, the back pocket that goes, the trolley sleeve will go like this on top of that. So I have bound all the pieces. They look good. I've done a orange um, with the orange and I don't know, you see it, orange thread. Why not, right? It's a bit much, but I'm a bit much. So now this should be placed on this about one inch from the bottom and that looks good so I'm just gonna clip this on the sides and then I'm gonna sew this down on the sides I think I think that's I think that's what I'm about to do so now this has been attached to this I did not sew I just sewed right down the sides this is now called middle pocket B. I'm going to put that to the side. Now it's time to work on pocket C and D. Uh, how do I want to do this? C and D need zippers. I haven't chosen the zipper that I want to work with. And this one feels like a, a good time. It feels like a fun time. This is a zipper by the yard and it's got this, it's this teal color. And it does match her jacket almost dead on. And I think it would go with that fabric really well. Oh, it does. I started to do black, but that's just not fun. So you know what? Let's do this. I'm going for it. I'm not even going to pull out the black. We're going to open this one up and I'm going to prepare these two pockets. Okay, so we've chosen our zippers because that was a whole ordeal. And if you've ever used buy any zippers um, by the yard, which I absolutely love because it's expensive, but it, it works out really well. Um, I'm going to take this. You always cut from one side. So one side will always remain uncut for me. That way it's easier to put these zippers on. I'm going to put the fabric in the two holes. This one's got the flat butt going this way. And I'm going to engage it and then just pull it apart. That zipper is now on there. Now I need to put this one on. So we're gonna put it with the nose going towards the my right hand here. The nose is headed this way. Flat part is up here. I'm gonna hold these together, my left hand. I'm gonna just pull it and now we're closing it, perfect. Now the zippers are on here. I need to create some stops so I don't accidentally just fly off the handle. So I'm gonna put these kind of here and here. I'm gonna close this together. They said you could use a, a 30 inch. Now I know good and well, I don't need 30 inches of zipper. I don't believe <laughs> these guys are only gonna take up so much zippers and we will not be wasting this expensive zipper tape. So I'm just going to measure probably about here, which is about 15 inches, and I'm going to cut that. When I was first learning to work with zippers, I was like, how do they cut it? And that's how. Surprise. All right, now I'm going to just sew straight across here. I'm going to sew in the middle, and I'm going to sew on the back end. Actually, I'm not going to sew in the middle. I'm going to sew two in the middle. And that way it can, um, you'll see. Okay, let me show you. I just sewed across the side, the end there, the end there, and then two in the middle. And then I'm going to just uh, cut this apart in between. And then we will have two zippers. This one will open this way. This one will open this way. And they look like they're long enough, like I have enough to play with on both sides. I don't want to waste this stuff. This stuff is too expensive. So now I'm going to take this zipper and I'm going to put it uh, right sides together and I'm going to clip it in place and then I'm going to sew a, a generous quarter inch seam from the top. I'm going to do the same thing with this one, but we're making sure that the zipper is on the inside because that's the way I want these to open. And then we'll clip that one too. 
and we'll sew leaving the zipper over here we're just going to sew all the way down this way so now i've sewn this down from edge to edge then i'm going to flip it like this so that the zipper tape is flat and this is the top portion then I'm gonna flip it over and while it's flat like this I'm gonna sew on the very edge right here and it's gonna produce top stitching on the front but it's gonna enclose all these raw edges so I know it looks weird and uncomfortable but you're just gonna sew straight down this edge here and now we have some nice top stitching and this is sewn down in the back it's clean do the same thing with the other pocket so now we've got to do the binding we've got to put the binding on the top and that's really cute and really pretty um i've got my binding strips that are marked for these pockets i'm going to sew it to the back be sure to line these up don't line it up out here line it up with the pocket sew it the same way we do to the back roll it over to the front and then go on ahead and give it some nice top stitching and you're done with this. And then actually we need to move the zipper into the area, the proper area and sew right here and do the same thing to just make sure that our stops are inside here and then we'll trim this pocket down to size. Again, be sure to move the zipper into this area, hold this closed and stitch back and forth and stitch back and forth on both of them and then you can cut off the excess. I can't stress this enough, make sure your zipper's in here. I've just sewn my little stop there. I'm gonna open it so that my ruler can fit and then I'm just gonna trim the zipper even with the pocket and the binding and then we'll do the same thing over here. Close this. Handle with care. I mean, I, I backstitched on mine stops but just you know make it make sense okay now we've got these cute pockets and we need to trim them to the proper height and then ooh, a lot is getting trimmed off all my pretty quilting gone just like that it's such pretty quilting down here and it's about to be gone Let me just make sure that it's the same height as that other pocket. I am even more pleased with the fact that I chose that lime green since my focal gal here is, um, it looks so good, it looks so good. I love buying any zippers, oh! All right, so I've trimmed them down and I'm absolutely sick about what I had to cut off, but now I'm gonna just go around there and seal it with a 1 8 inch seam. So I wasn't initially all that excited about this, but this right here just got me very excited. This looks great. They look absolutely lovely together. Very happy about this. So E and F are the pot side pockets. I went ahead and bound those and now we can put those to the side. We're going to work with the inner back pocket now. So with this, we are working on the inner back pocket. It says to wrong sides together. We're going to put it together and we are going to press it. So the pocket was nice and easy to do. All I did was um, folded it, pressed it, put this in here up to the fold left about three quarters of an inch around it all, closed it back and pressed it. And it looks like I need to press it just a little bit harder on this corner, but other than that, we are good to go. We can put that to the side. Actually, I'm gonna top stitch where the fold is. So if you have directional fabric, make sure that it is like this. You know, if it was a little face, the head would be up here, tummy, and then the feet. And this right here is where it opens. You want to be sure that it's just like this. Opened it up, put this panel right in here, kind of moved it. I eyeballed this three quarters of around the way. 
I starched it really hard. I probably need to press it one more time. It still looks like it needs a little more encouragement right in this tiny little corner. And uh, that's that. And then we'll put this to the side. So this is the inner pocket. Okay, can't see that. <laughs> okay. Do the same thing with the other side. So I'm a little concerned. I don't have basting tape and that is exactly what I would need to do this properly. Um, I'm going to have to get creative, but what I'm going to do is start down here. I'm going to sew down across, come back down, probably come back around here and then do an X in here some kind of way. I don't know. I might get creative and I don't know, but there, this is where the markings should be. So they should be facing up and this is right side out too. So I'm about to go get creative in some kind of way. I haven't figured out exactly how, um, but I'll figure it out. So it came out okay. This one right here is just off just like an eighth, which is kind of annoying. But other than that, they're fine. Turns out this will mark on this. Um, this is that clover pin, but be careful because... The yellow one does not come off. I've had some problems with that. But other than that, these look pretty good. They'll do. So now I'm going to grab my pockets E and F and line them up here at the bottom. And just do an eighth and stitch around the sides, the bottom right here, around the sides and the bottom. And then these will be, I think then I round the corners and then they'll be done. So some tips and tricks on this one here. Um, be sure that you get some basting tape, something that will allow strapping to stick to strapping or um, whatever you need to do. If you have fabric on there, you're probably good. You probably can hook yourself up with some pins, but it just is a thing. It And also you can't see where you sewn, which is cool. Um, so if you go a weird diagonal like I did on this one, which is up a little bit further here, you can't see it because this black thread on this black webbing does not show up, which is nice. Go on ahead and use your open toe foot. So just sew all of this. You can go over this a few times if you'd like for more security. Um, I believe she actually suggests that you do that and use your open toe foot so that you can just follow the marked lines like I did here. No, this one is the one where it's dead center. I think it's that one. This one, not quite. Um, blah, blah, blah. So I have sewn this on down here. Now we're going to find center. For center, I like to use big dressmaker pins um, so that they're like obnoxious and I can really see them. It says fold the, do this before you round the edges, just in case you don't round it perfectly. You're going to find center. There we go. So that is center. You're going to do that for the top, bottom, right, and left. I'm just folding it all in half. Trying to anyway. This one is harder because you've got that, that webbing down here. And I'll fold the sides to find center, which just happens to be right where the binding is and on the other side it should be in the same place and it is <clears throat> okay so now I've got all four centers right here top and bottom and we will just round the corners I like to push them up until it 
touches the sides on both of those sides and then I do a little sawing motion. just to be sure to get it there we go and then I'll go and seal that really quickly with an eighth of an inch just right around the more you sew this the more compacted it gets so don't be scared to sew it a few times okay so I have the bag body I couldn't find a safety pin so I just put a pin in here to mark the top if you've got directional fabric you really want to pay attention to that so the first one they want us to mark from the bottom i marked that then i went ahead and marked the next one and this is all happening on the lining side of my bag which is funny because i thought my lining was this <laughs> apparently i got a little confused whatever so next markings that we need to do are they're longer than my ruler they're longer than just everything so what I'm gonna do is I am going to even though it needs to go on both sides I, I need to be a little more accurate so I'm just gonna fold it in half and I am going to mark it like this and then I'm gonna flip it over and mark it like that too this is for section 5 and A and then 2A so yeah my first one that's the section that I'm on I'm on A 2A and I think this will help you out otherwise we might be up the creek because of how big this is so now I can get some accuracy some not a whole bunch and I know that this bag will move and breathe and things so that's fine, but I'm just going to mark the first line right here. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And then I'm going to move it over just a smidge. These are the handle placement lines so they are tight okay so I've got my two lines that way before I flip it over I'm just gonna rotate it around line it up And here we go now I have these long lines they are just about dead on these right here jumped off just a little bit but not enough for me to be overly concerned um, now we're doing some more stuff here I'm just following actually this is probably the most self-explanatory my biggest concern is because I'm using chalk and I don't know if this is that heat erasable chalk or if this is the chalk that came with the this marking pen my main concern is that it rubs off and that is going to be an issue but nothing else is showing up and I would hate to have to bust out the painter's tape but if you are having the same problem painter's tape so these lines the, the short ones up here are what they call stitch lines to help things bend so what I did was I tightened my stitch line like when I'm quilting and I'm going through a bunch of layers usually I keep it on a three or even higher uh, I actually have this on a nice like less than 2.5 because again I want this to really um, be a tight line and all you just do is straight stitch all right this bag is starting to take shape I've grabbed my center pockets and then my side pockets that are going on the front. I gotta find the front. This is the front. Now we've got to rotate this here and I've got to find the right line. And here it is. This is the right line right here. 
and we are going to position this bad boy right here underneath this line I don't know if you can see it I can see it there's a line there and it looks good it looks straight so I'm gonna grab a couple of or the serious pins I'm gonna grab some dressmaker I hate that I don't know where my yellow ones are it seems like well these are fine okay all right and here we go okay and now okay here we go here we go so now I've got the bottom parts all lined up and all pinned together So I've got the pockets pinned. I've got them clipped on the sides. All I have to do now is just sew down here with the quarter inch seam. Okay, so I've got them all sewn down. I sewed over a couple of pins because I was being naughty. Now we're going to look at it and see if I even put the pockets on the right sides. <laughs> Okay, and now I need to press these. Okay, they look like they're all going to line up. Oh my goodness, this bag is really taking shape. Again, we've got to press the bottom here. Oh, you can't even see the line that I just stitched. I was like, how, what? And I know that they want you to do a, a top stitch, but I was just like, what? Okay, this works. Okay, I went rogue on these because of the way I wanted to sew the bottom. So I just sewed the bottom by itself. And then I went around and I sewed down these sides and I sewed down this side. But I wanted to have orange thread across the top so I had to switch it out you know that kind of stuff so but I just basically I sewed this all the way around I left this open and I sewed this all the way around and it looks good we are really coming together so now that the pockets have been sewn in they want us to remark these lines um, the placement lines so okay Nice. And here we go. Okay. Now we've got the lines marked. A little weird but it works so the pocket hopefully I have there we go the pocket the fold is up here and I've just sewn across the bottom I've lined it up with the line that was right here um, this is the top and it is clipped in place and now what I just saw something uh -oh. I drop a pin maybe okay so now we've got this side here 
I'm going to stick this in. This is the trolley that B pocket and I have it lined up between those lines. There's a line right here of stitching from the other side and this goes just beyond it, just beyond the line of stitching. And so when I follow that line again, it's going to catch this. At least that's the that's the goal. So I'm just going to move it down just a little bit and stick some pins in there. I think I lost a pin, but I'm sure I will find it at the most opportune time. Getting ready to lose all the other pins. Now I'm going to sew right here on that line again. I think I'm going to mark it just so that I can see it pretty good. There we go. That is not where I want that line to be. I want that line to be there. There we go. Okay. Okay, so I just finished stitching this down. Moment of truth. Hey, I did. I got it. Ouch, geez, that is a pin. <laughs> Love it. I swear, if I use pins, I'm going to get myself uh, every time. Um, But... It lines up right in there. That's lovely. Now we need to press this back and line it up here and there and pin it. And hopefully I won't get myself again because I certainly just got myself. There we go. Now I'm just going to jump in this one eighth from the side and one eighth from the side. So now I've stitched this down. So that is in place. So we can pull these. And now it says to stitch the back pocket in place. So we pull these and flip this right sides up and there it just happens to be a line right there that this can line up with. I know my lines have gotten difficult to see but I can still see them. And now we need to stitch along the sides and it wants you to stitch across the, the bottom here but I don't really care about the inside of that being oh so finished with no raw edges. So I think I'm just going to stitch along the side. I don't want to press my luck with the top stitching hitting where it's supposed to hit. So we're just going to pull this up to match this. All right, so this pocket has now been stitched into place, so I can pull these two pins. And it says to stitch across the bottom now with a quarter inch, but I just don't want to. <laughs> I just, I just don't want to. I mean, and that worked out really well. And now we have a finished line there, and it looks really good here. I'm glad that I chose to do that. I almost omitted it, but then I looked over here and was like, well, that has a little one, so. Okay, and yes, I have lost a lot of my markings with that chalk, but I think I'm still okay. Um, you might need to mark your stuff with tape, maybe because I've jostled this a lot, but I think I'm just down to the handles and I can kind of still see that. So maybe it's good that it's kind of worn out this much, I don't know. So a few things are about to happen. I am going to, just like Tula did in her, um, in her bag, she added bats. And I was like, absolutely, it just makes sense. It just makes sense. 
But the ones that she added were cut by Sally Tomato, and they were nice, don't get me wrong. But I was like, I think I can cut more exotic, random, weird, funky looking bats, and that I did. So I took my Cricut and I just went Cricut crazy and cut a gazillion bats. Now we're doing a matching bag, and I was going to cut that bag's bats in gray because the bag has a gray kind of theme but is that really a good idea? I just don't think it is. I think bats are supposed to be black. So I moved on from there and cut a gazillion bats in all different shapes. So I'm going to pick out a couple, more than a couple, and I am going to sporadically put them around this bag and sew some down, and then I'm going to put the straps on and probably sew a couple more down. I'm just going to embellish the bag with bats the same way that she did. I cut so many cool shaped bats. I don't know that I have any really traditional. I guess this one might be considered traditional. But if you want the bats that I have, I will make my file shareable on the Cricut. And that way you can look at the bat shapes because there are so many bat shapes available. And it took me a very long time to find the ones that I really wanted. And so I will, again, make that file shareable so you can get the bats that I cut and use. My goodness, I cut a lot of bats. And I got this faux leather from Hobby Lobby. It's not dimpled like hers was, but it's definitely, you know, got the grainy leather kind of feel to it, so... I'm going to figure out where I want these bats to go and then I'm going to get batty and then I will come back, do the straps, do the next layer of bats and then, yes, why would I, this is too many bats, guys, don't cut this many bats, this is insane. Well, I've gone batty and I have put bats on these sides here. I didn't mean for them to be the same, but it is what it is. And I've just sewn around it. Um, loosely with a running stitch, just a regular stitch. You could blanket stitch this. You could do whatever you want. If I was really on my P's and Q's, what I would have done is put this in a computer program and done an embroidery applique to get, um, you know, perfect results where you don't see my hand in it. However, you get what you get and you don't throw a fit. And I think just the idea of them being on there, I don't think anybody's going to be looking at that stitching oh so closely, but you definitely can see my hand. It's not perfect. It's just outlined in black thread. I took these pockets off to do that. And I also, I didn't take this pocket off. I just unpicked it a little bit and then picked it a little bit more so that I can put, I can't see the bat because there's bats everywhere back here, but so that I can put bats on the front and the back. I just, oh, this one right here. Had I just stitched this on the way it was, it would have gone through that pocket and messed up the pocket being functional. We don't want that. The straps will go on top of some of these, and then I plan on putting a couple of more on the, um, on the outside of the strapping also. So two more are going on here, which will make a total of... Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I will we'll have ten bats on here. That's funny. I thought I wanted an odd number, but oh, because there's two here. I've got three here. It'll be another three there, and then we've got four here. That math ain't mathing. But anyway, um, lots of bats, and I have lots of bats left over for our second project. So I find that the the bats that I really prefer to use are the medium size and the small size. I made a lot of large ones, but they're kind of too big to put on here. So the medium ones and the smaller ones are probably a better fit. I think I did six inches wide. I left everything proportional. I think I did six inches wide for the bats and then four inches wide. Like no, six, five, and four, I think. I think that's what I did. I love the fact that my bats are different like batty shapes. Like this bat shape right here, just it just hits different. I love that one. I think that's my favorite guy. Really like this one. There's one that looks like a butterfly. You can't even tell. Anyway, I went batty. I'm very excited about my bats. 
let's keep it going and let's put these straps on. So because we're working with these webbing straps by themselves, I'm just going to hit this with a lighter. Be careful not to burn your bag. And just make sure that these are all sealed in, okay? Because we don't want them coming undone like that right there. Ooh. Okay, I feel good about that. I've also marked center on my bag, which is already rubbing out, which is funny because I did it with that chalk. But I marked it with some pins also so that we know where center is. And now we're going to put this to the side just for a moment. And I'm going to grab some extra fabric that I have. And I'm going to cut a two inch strip. I'm now going to turn the strip over a quarter of an inch on both sides and press it really hard. Now I'm going to take the strip and cut it down to three and a half. So now it's it measures one and a half by three and a half and this is just a rough estimate. Nothing too exact is really happening here. I just want to make a little something to cover those ends. So now I'm going to put it right sides together and just sew a scant quarter inch. The seams are open. It's just a little tube. I'm just going to turn the tube right side out. Making sure to keep those edges in perfect. And now this should just insert right in here with no problem. See? It goes in, yay. And then we're gonna do the same thing with the other side. And that way we won't have any exposed, I just put them right up together. And that way we won't have any exposed sides or edges. All right, so I'm just gonna put that to the side and let's keep going. Make sure your pocket, is, the top is pinned down because we will be doing some sewing, making intersections and we do not want that flipped. So from here, so we marked a line going in about five and a quarter. I can see it on this side and this side. I can still see the line to some degree. And we are going to take this tape and open it. This is Wonder Tape, it's wash away tape but we're gonna try to use it to hold this bag in place because the bag straps in place and see if that works. I don't know that it will. I got it from Joann's. It says it's Dritz, wash away, wonder tape. It won't gum up your needle. And if this bag is ever washed, it will just wash out. At least that's what it says, we'll see. So I put this tape down, I'm just smashing it in place. Then we're gonna peel up the outer part. That tape is very sticky uh, to that backing. So, you know, you gotta kind of want it. So we've taken this strap, folded it in half, marked the centers. Now I'm gonna take one center and put it right here where this center line is and cover that line. It's supposed to be on the inside of that first line. So right there. And run this like this. That basin tape really does work, y'all. I mean, it really works. Okay. 
Okay. So now that tape is down, this is on the center line here or close to it. I wish I had put that on the other side. Now make sure that your belt is not twisted and then bring it on back down where this is near the center too. And we are going to, oh no, we need to line this up. There we go. Okay. And cover that and do the same thing down here. Make sure that it's straight and get this here so it meets up, line it with the inside of that line. And push down, down here. We are gonna slip these guys, this little right over here. Perfect. And we're going to find that line. Now, Bayani has a whole way that she sews down and crosses and whatnot. I'm just going to sew this bad boy down and make sure I put a cross right here and then the cross up here. We've got some, some markings to do. Now I'm just going through, now that everything's kind of pinned down and stuck and whatnot, I am marking these X's from corner to corner, trying to, <laughs> so that I can just follow the lines. Because I'm going to go back and do the X part. I'm going to sew over a lot of that two times because that is where things can get a little tricky, you know, holding your bag. It's supposed to give it some extra stability. So I'm going to indeed give it some extra stability. Then I'm going to take it over to my sewing machine and sew this down. I love that you really can't see the thread color. If you use black thread, you really won't be able to see it. So if I don't do this as neatly as I wish, it should hide pretty good. And I'm also going to do an X on this guy here for good measure. Just because I know that it's got a join right here. And this is the bottom of the bag, so I think it'll be fine. Make sure that your pocket underneath is flat and there are no pins. I had a pin over here that didn't want me to be great, so I had to move it over right here my other pen is right there then there's one right there holding this pocket in place all right so now that that's prepared I'm going to go sew it down then after that I'm going to add a couple more bats on top so there's bats underneath I'll add some well that one's technically not going to be underneath but that one will be I'm going to add some bats on top of the strapping so the straps are all sewn down. You just sew up into this point right here, not past that. That's where it starts. They have been enforced, reinforced. I did break a needle. Uh, my, <laughs> I claim that my machines are oh so strong and they are, but I broke a needle back here. And so I'm gonna run it under the HD9 and see how that somewhere on one of these sides, I think it's this side, where it just did not want to play. Um, 
other than that, this went swimmingly. I can't see where I broke the needle. Everything actually looks nice and tight back here, but I am gonna just reinforce this on the HD9 just because I know that something, maybe right here, maybe it was that one, I don't know, but I know that something was doing some things. I did some back stitching like none other and I wasn't pulling my thread scissors hop or anything like that. So I'm going to need to trim all these where it gets a little dark. But I've done a lot of back stitching and making sure that that was tight. And I'm also going to go through and just put a little fray check um, on the front where these, these things all come together. Just a little bit. Um, just to uh, secure... And I also noticed that the biggest panel, I never uh, sealed the edges on this big panel. So I'm going to do that and get ready for our next steps. Oh, I've got to sew the bats down. I forgot to put the bats on. I almost forgot. So I'm going to seal the edges of this big panel. It's been quilted and it's been quilted all the way through to the edges, which is why I'm not having so much lifting and whatnot, but... I need to seal that. I need to put the bats over here and then put some fray check on and then we will move on to our next steps. I'm going to also just run over this one more time for funsies and yes, then I'll come back. So I've got two more zipper pulls. I was going to do the purple, change my mind. Um, we're just going to keep all the zippers the same, make it nice and cohesive. This is the same zipper tape we had from before. So one side is cut. I don't fool with that side. I load from the, the side with the uncut. And I want the zippers to kiss. I want them to be kissing zippers uh, for this bag, of course. So I'm going to load the first one with the butt going that way. So the flat part is going that way. And so to do that, I stick it through here and I stick it through here. Remember one side will always be the side that you cut and one side will be the side that you load. Just remember that. Oops, didn't mean to do that. And now we'll get here. We will try to engage right there and then we'll pull it apart. So then that one's on there. And then I'm going to put this one nose down and nose down and line them up. Oh crap, missed it. Grab with both hands, taut, and then just close. Okay, so now we're gonna chase these into the proper spots. They want you to do, uh, they want you to leave at least three inches on either side. I will not. That is wasting too much very expensive zipper tape. I just cannot afford to do that. So I'm going to move it down. I'm going to measure. These should actually be pinned out of the way. Where is my, this was given to me by one of our Quilty BFFs on the channel because she knows I love pin cushions. Pin cushions are my jam, I love them. So we're just gonna get this out the way here. Okay, what are we doing? Moving the zipper tape into the zipper area. I feel like three inches on each side, I will not. I think we give it a nice one and a half maybe. <laughs> maybe one and a half here. This feels good. And I'm just gonna cut this off. Again, the other side stays, um, the other side stays uncut. We only cut from one side. Zippers do not frighten me anymore. They used to, but they don't anymore. All right. Now I'm gonna sew some stops just on the outsides. I'm just gonna sew right through it just to be safe so that I don't have any accidents and I have to try to figure out how to put the zippers back on. All right, we have a 
pin here marking the top of that bag. We're just going to put that there. And I am going to, I could tape this in place now that I have tape. Um, and then just sew it like that. Or I could clip this in place too, um, which is how I usually roll. And I think I'm going to clip it in place. I am letting the zipper tape overhang here about an eighth of an inch. So I I forgot to do that before and I the zippers came out okay, but have them overhang just a smidge, just a smidge. Uh, you will have a little, it'll be an easier time for you to cover up that stitching. So just about an eighth of an inch. There we go. So I sewed down all the way. This left me just enough to still be able to sew down and not have it get in the way. And so now I'm gonna flip it over. And you press this over and sew a straight line down and that flattens out your zipper and encases the raw edge of all that foam. And that's why you want a little bit of a hangover so that you can really do it. I struggled with mine. It worked, but it was a struggle before. So I'm just going to push this over and I sew this direction and it produces top stitching on the other side. And I just have to be okay with that because it's just what it is. But um, yes, I flip it over and I sew just like this. So the zipper is sewn flat down. Everything is encased for the most part. Now I'm gonna take this right side and match it to this right side. I'm gonna make sure those straps stay down. And line it up with this side here. And we are going to sew this to there. I could open this zipper if I wanted to to make it any easy to make it easier. But I'm making sure that the sides are lined up. And I will clip this again leaving some overhang. So now I have sewn the zipper to this side. So now we've got to open this so that we can get to the top stitching part. And I can easily top stitch this down or get in there to top stitch it down. Remember, we're just going to open this up and push this over and just sew down. But I'm going to be pushing, you know, I'm going to make sure that the <laughs> everything is out of the way. I just want to show you guys that I keep this foot lined up just like this when I'm doing this stitching down. And again, I have it open, so I should be fine here. So, that is all done. <clears throat> I'm going to turn this bag loop right side out I could see why you might need a little bit more depending upon what kind of machine you are overhang but I don't think you need a full three inches but a little bit more would have done me great because I did go push that right up to the stops but yeah now I'm getting ready to create some more stops and then trim this even with the bag actually I really don't have to turn it I just need to get here I'm gonna sew right across from here and then I'm going to trim this even and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side and then I'll just leave it turned out. Make sure you try to line these up directly across. This one here is over a little bit but I'm just going to trim it so that it's 
not so apparent that that's happening. However, I know it's happening a little bit there. And now you can't tell, but it had a little something going on there. This side is fine. Just close that up and trim off the excess. All right, now let's work on these bag ends. So we have our ends and the bag body and we are ready to finish this bag up. So I need to find the center. So I took this and I folded it with the zipper at the top and I pulled it taut and I found that the center was right here and then I put a pin no pin needed right here where the zipper is. And then you match the pins together and you find out where the, the centers are of everything. So just find the centers of everything. And now here goes where I'm gonna start hacking things. Um, I've done a couple of biennial projects that are all, you know, lovely and whatnot, but I find that I like to do things a little different. So I am actually going to add my binding. Instead of adding it to the loop at the end, I'm actually going to add the binding to this side panel, and I'm going to do it now. And I'm going to add it to this, the ends. So that way, when I put it on... I roll these over and I will be able to stitch with this bag body on my machine and I'll be pulling the binding over to capture all of the edges. You'll see, just trust me, this is my hack. I've got, there's a couple of different ways to do it. There's Kathy's hack and she sews her binding to the, to the strip, to the loop first. Um, and then there's Biani's way. So there's three different ways to do it. You can do it Biani's way, you can do it Kathy's way or you can do it my way. So this is the binding that I've I've got. And again, we are just going around. This is the wrong side. I should pin this some kind of way. Um, this is the wrong side of the fabric. Well, this is the right side, but I'm sewing this on to the lining side. And I'm gonna start right here. I'm gonna leave a long tail and I'm gonna start right here. And then I'm just gonna sew all the way around. So, when Biani joins the sides and, and whatnot of her stuff, she does the cross method the way that you would bind a quilt. Uh, the only way, the only reason, I mean, it does distribute bulk, which is great, but yeah, no, that's not what I do. Um, I just keep it very simple. I overlap by a quarter of an inch and I move on with my life. Um, this is on the inside. It would reduce bulk, but I'm not really worried about the bulk that it would be reducing. I'm just trying to make this clean and easy and we are almost to the end of this bag and I'm antsy to finish it. So this is what I do on a lot of my quilts. I'll do it on all of them. I can do the cross binding now much better than I could before. However, I, you know... Do it when you have to. Make, make stuff make sense. And for me, this will work just fine. I'm going to put it right sides together. I am going to sew a quarter of an inch seam. And then I'm going to move on with my life. All right. Now I'm just going to open this up. Oh, this was a not a scant. This was a full quarter. But we will be fine. I'm going to just open that up. Put them together. Smooth this out and now I'm going to just sew and close that up now I've got this on here if you'd like you can go around this with an eighth of an inch just to do some more compression I've done that on like my smaller machines um, just go around it one more time and tack down where this is rolling up or you can just set this aside and get ready for showtime I had to take out the pins 
So go ahead and find centers again by folding it in half, pinning, and do that on all four sides so that you can have your centers all ready because the next step we are going to pin these to the, the belt loop. So let's just get ready for that. Okay, it is time. These are pretty much the same. I don't care which one goes on the right, which one goes on the left. Everything has been attached. I've got my bag of Wonder Clips here. We are about to get Wonder Clip crazy with the bag loop. Make sure that you've got the bottom with the bottom. That's the most important thing that I want to be sure to do is to make sure that the the bottom of this is at the bottom. I also want to be sure that that loop is down. And I am going to match this here, right here center. And I am going to clip and clip. And I'm going to be sewing with the bag bottom on my machine. That's my preferred way to sew. So there we go. And then we are going to match this with the side. So this is what mine looks like. And now I'm just going to sew a quarter of an inch. Not worried about anything except for just sewing. Um, I could sew with this part on the bottom. It just six and a half dozen or the other. Um, it just kind of depends upon what you want to do. So we have it on there and now we just flip it over and sew it down. Now we've just got to do the same thing to the other side. really wish that this binding and inside stuff matched a little better, but you get what you get and you do not throw a fit. So I think sewing on the binding is everybody's least favorite part, and it's certainly my least favorite part, but it's necessary to get rid of all those raw edges. Mine is never super duper clean. Um, on the front, it's usually very clean, and every now and then I get a little wood on the ball. This was not one of those times. And I used jet black thread because again, I'm just trying to get through this bag. And again, do not fret over the inside of your bag. Now I know some people who can sew so well that they make a binding that can go on the outsides and people do all the things, but really all you're trying to do is enclose these. Now, if I wanted this to be cleaner, first of all, I would have used the same color lining um, all over and I would have used the same color binding. So that's your next tip. Use the same binding as this unless you want it to be an accent because you can just bind your butt off. Um, it came out, you know, on the front, it looks cool on the back. You know, I hit, I got in the money right here, but I jumped off like right there. It just, it happens. Um, you just get what you get and you do not throw a fit for me. And now this bag is ready to be turned inside out and I feel really good about it. So let's do that. They call this birthing a bag and I just tickle, I laugh every time somebody says it. Um, and this bag is pretty sturdy, so, you know. Oh, don't be scared of it, wrestle it, just turn it inside out. As I am birthing this bag, I am trying to find the binding. And where there is binding, I'm pushing it out with my little hands here. And I'll go through and clean up any little stray pieces of uh, thread. All right, so this bag actually stands really well without the stabilizer being in there. And I did not buy a stabilizer, although if you have don't have a buy any stabilizer store, <laughs> stabilizer store, a store that sells the buy any stabilizers near you, you can, um, I think I'm going to do it. I'll show you in just a moment. I'll do it and show you guys how I 
So I get near these um, where the binding is and I just pinch it, pinch and roll. I pinch and massage it into place. Like right here, I'm gonna really just pinch it and give it a good massage. And see if I, like right there, there's some strings that are trying to come out. And I will grab my, actually there's a set of, set of tweezers right here. Ouch. So I grab my tweezers and I hold on to them and just push these as close to down here as I can and just snip them off. Try to pull it out and snip them off. And that way you can't really see them. Tons of little bit of clean little bits of cleanup all over. This is how the bag stands without the stabilizer sleeve in it looks good it really does fold right here with that extra little line of stitching um, it feels secure my bats look good the front looks excellent such a such a vibe I am really digging this um, let's go on ahead and do the last little finishing bits this you get from Michaels it is plastic corrugated sheet and it is pretty darn sturdy and so if you can't get to a stabilizer sleeve and I feel like I bought one somewhere around here but no worries we've got a couple of projects that we're doing I'm going to cut this down to the dimensions of the um, stabilizer base so hold on one second so the base is supposed to be seven and three quarters and I'm going to Seven and a half, seven and three quarters, this bad boy. And it will cut with your rotary blade. I don't suggest you do this with the rotary blade that you care about, but it will cut with your rotary blade. And there we go. So it's seven and three quarters by 20 and a half. And this comes up to just 20, so I should have cut it the other way, but we're going to let this live. This is the base stabilizer sleeve. And so we are going to get busy with this. Very simple. On the short edge right here, I'm going to turn this over a quarter of an inch and press it. So, I did not measure, I just eyeballed it. I turned this over a quarter of an inch, pressed it, turned it over two times, pressed it, used some starch. Now I'm just going to top stitch this down really quickly. This now got top stitched down very, very quickly. Now with right sides together, I'm going to put this together here and I'm going to stitch down the long side. Now I'm going to open up this seam. And we're going to press this seam open. I'm going to try to center it. And I'm going to grab my favorite tool. And we are just going to open this seam really quickly and press it with our iron. Down the center really hard. Stabilizer sleeve has been pressed open. Now, this is the finished side. I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to sew this closed. Now this has been sewn all the way down. I'm just gonna cut this corner right here and I'm gonna cut this corner off right here. Don't cut the stitches. We're just reducing bulk in those corners. Do not cut the stitches. Now we are going to turn this right sides out and give it another press. And 
Look at that. Isn't she cute? And I actually really enjoy looking down at the bat through the bag. Like I don't necessarily look in people's edges. I don't because I'm not nosy like that. And I'm not trying to look under the skirt of your bags and your quilts and stuff. But I do love to see the finished bottom of a bag. I hope that makes sense. Where is my point turner? Here we go. I'm just going to poke these out. There we go. And I backstitched, so I'm not worried about poking them through too much. Now we're just going to give this another press with this seam side nice and centered. We're going to give this a press just like this. Clip this. Okay, so this is our stabilizer sleeve. I'm going to put this in here. And just get it on down in there. And there we have it. And honestly, this bag is sturdy enough that you really don't have to have it. Although when you put stuff in it, it might start to droop at the bottom. So maybe you do. But this will work in a pinch if you don't have the by any one. I'm just gonna put this in here and tuck that underneath. Oh, that's a good fit for, especially seeing as all supposed to be half an inch bigger, that's a really nice fit. I just tuck it down on that side and then when you look in my bag, it looks good. Huh, had no idea, oh, that's a pocket. I was like, why does that match? It's a pocket. All right. Let's do the strap and then we're calling it. We're sticking a fork in it. I have about three inches more than I need. So we're just gonna roll with those extra three inches and just be generous with it. First thing I'm gonna do is grab that lighter and burn these ends really quickly. I'm squaring this up because it is not and we have extra so I feel good about that. And then we'll burn this in too. before it starts to fray. And uh, just be careful if you got kids around and all those things, just be careful what you're doing, but make sure that it's all sealed up. And remember we did the two inch strip and we turned it over a couple of times. Well, we're gonna do the same thing here and we are just going to um, fold this over and give this a finished edge. We're cutting this down to three and a half. We're gonna fold it right sides together and just sew really quickly down this side. Now we've turned it right side out. I could give this a little press, I guess. Yeah, I'm gonna stick this in here and fold it over on itself. It's in there. Now I'm just gonna fold it right sides together. And now we have a cute little finished edge. And I'm just going to stitch here, here, and down the front. Okay, now our strap has a front and a back. Um, perfect. I'm going to just trim those little threads there. And that way, it's just all sealed up. It's just cleaner. And I'm going to do the same thing for the other side, too. So I have my markings marked. I've got a little box here at the ends, and then on the other side, I have a line. So this has a slight curve to it, so I can tell which side is up and which side is down. This is the good side up. It's, it's kind of got a dome up here. And with the right side up, I'm just going to take this and insert it in. In, and then down. Right, this is all right side. This is the seam side is down here. The, the ugly side is on the back. So this is right sides up. The X's are on the right side. I'm gonna fold it over on itself. 
And now I'm gonna stitch this into place just like this. I'm gonna stitch along and make the X, okay? All right, now we've got our things sewn here in place, perfect. Now we need to take the swivel um, with the seam side up and we're gonna stick one of our swivel hooks through here. There we go. I got nervous, I didn't think it was gonna fit for a second. So our swivel hook is on there. Now we're gonna take this. Remember, this is the seam side. This is the seam side right here. This is the top. I'm taking it through there and back down. Back down through there. All right, now we've got an adjustable strap. Good on us. Now we've got our swivel hook over here, our slider over there. And now we've just got to get the swivel hook on this. So this is the seam side up. This is the back. I'm pulling this through. The swivel hook is on the outside. I'm going to match it to this right here. And I'm going to sew it together the same way. Sew the box, sew the X. And now we have our carrying strap that is adjustable the front. I'm tempted to put a bed on there, but I am going to reframe. Although, I'm not, but I'm just saying. I'm thinking about it. It's now time for our carrying strap pad. Alright, I've grabbed um, my little binding pieces right here, and I'm going to bind this side, and I'm also going to bind this side right here. We're gonna make it all nice and cute and then we are going to I decided to stack mine this way um, I had options but I think I like it this way best as opposed to this way I don't know stack them up how you want and bind these little edges first so I've gone rogue on this carrying strap because I don't love making them <laughs> I don't think anybody does, but I'm just going to put this. I just stacked them together, sewed them together. I didn't even seal the edges on this. I've just been, I just stacked them together, sewed them together. It's all crooked a little bit and whatnot, but I'm going to trim it up and bind it, and it should still come out fairly nice. It's just, you know, we are at the end of the project, and I'm ready to be done with it so I can move on to the next one. So yeah, put this on top of the, how stack it however you want. I decided I didn't want to introduce a new color. That was just weird that I even wanted to do that. So I just stacked them on top of one another and I'm about to round these corners really quickly. And then I'm going to seal the edges and then I'm going to bind it. And I'm going to bind it the same way I bound the, the other thing. Um, the, I'm going to sew it to the back and pull it to the front. So now the carrying strap is done. This is probably the best carrying strap I've ever made. Well, that's not true, but yeah, yeah, actually I think it is. So now we're gonna take the carrying strap, which is just, it was easy peasy. Um, just bind it and make it. This is actually, it's not bad looking at all. Um, now I wish I, you know, set this on a little straighter, but I think it'll be fine. You take this with the straps and you just feed it through and now we have a carrying strap pad 
on our thing and we just attach this to the bag and she looks good. Straight it is. Boy, I wish I had had matching uh, rings on the side, but you get what you get and you do not throw a fit. So here we are. Here it is. It'll look good when it's full of all my things. Bag complete. Now on to the next one. Thank you.